What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another video. Today, I'm gonna help you create a data analyst resume. Now, when I say data analyst resume, it's not that much different than a regular resume, except that it's gonna be catered for a data analyst job. In just a second, we're gonna take a look on my screen at a sample resume. I'll have the template in the description so you can just go and download it and fill in your information, but it's a fantastic starting place to actually creating your resume. When we're looking at this resume, we'll take a look at each section and kind of dissect each part of it. And then at the very end, I'll give some extra tips on what you should include and how to actually write your resume as well. So without further ado, let's jump on my screen, take a look at the resume and see how you can create your own data analyst resume. So here's our sample resume. I'm just gonna walk through the entire thing super quick and then we'll break down each section individually. I'll give my thoughts and some tips on each section. And remember, you can download this exact thing in the description below. I'll have a link. I'll probably put it on my GitHub or somewhere else, but it'll be free to download. Uh, so you can go ahead and do that. But let's zoom in just a little bit. So at the very top, we have our header. We have some just basic uh, contact information. Then we have skills. Then we have projects and notice the projects are up here at the top and we'll get to that later about the order of where you should be putting your things. Then we have work experience and then we have education. So really quickly, I'm gonna zoom out and I hope you can still see it. The order is actually quite important. Now there is one piece that is not in here right now and that is a summary section. I don't have a summary section on my real resume. I just, I don't think it's useful or helpful. I don't have one. You can include one and it would be right up here at the very top. Now, why do we have the skills and projects at the top? Well, it's because that most people who are trying to break into data analytics don't have any experience in data analytics. If I am reading this resume as a hiring manager, and the first thing that I look up here and I see is experience and it's not analyst, it's a teacher or a nurse or something, I'm gonna be like, uh, this person doesn't have any experience, I don't wanna hire them. The first thing that you wanna have in your resume is something that is good for the hiring manager to see. The first several things. You should put all your best stuff at the top. That's my uh, what I believe. So I think that these skills are really strong. A lot of great skills. And then these projects are all really good projects. Now this is just a sample. These aren't all real projects. Um, or they are real, real projects. They're just not you know, ones that I built myself. It's just a sample. So. Uh, then right here, we have our work experience. Now, if you're, like I said, a nurse or a teacher or a lawyer or something that's not relevant to data analytics, you want that at the bottom. Um, and then you're gonna wanna tie in uh, some things in these descriptions and then the education at the bottom. My education was terrible, okay? I had a bachelor's in recreational therapy, which had nothing to do with data analytics. So for a tech job, it has, was not good. I always had mine at the bottom. So let's start at the very top and walk through each section. So. At the very top, you wanna to have maybe a title, but for sure your full name. You definitely want to include your phone number if you're okay with them calling you, but definitely an email. For sure include things like a LinkedIn profile or a GitHub profile. You can also put your portfolio. In fact, I highly recommend putting your portfolio because it just looks good or if they check it out, that's a really good thing. And then your location, because sometimes your job is going to be location-based, whether you're in Dallas or another metropolitan city. Uh, it's just nice to have that on there. This should be the simplest one to fill out, unless you haven't built out something like a portfolio, you just don't include it. Um, but this one should be the simplest one, right? You're just putting contact information, maybe a link to a website. Next, we have the skill section. And this one on my own personal resume, I have at the very top. I typically recommend anyone who does not have experience, who is trying to break into data analytics to put this at the top as well and have these skills and know these skills, that's important. Um, but when the hiring manager first initially sees this, it's just gonna be a mental check. Okay, they have the skills that we're looking for. Let's move on to the rest of the resume. Um, but you want as many mental checks for what they're looking for at the beginning. Just gonna, I'm gonna keep repeating that. Um, this is how I personally write my skills. So I write something like SQL, and then I'll say SQL Server, MySQL, PostgreSQL. Now, I have used all these different types of SQL in my actual job. If you don't, you haven't done that and you're just starting out, maybe you put something like, um, you know, subqueries, store procedures, joins, whatever, the actual things within SQL. I don't really think, I don't recommend that as much because typically people know what SQL is. Like if they use SQL, they know what SQL is. So they're just gonna expect that you know those things. Now for something like Python, 
it's different because there are packages. Something like R, there are packages and libraries within them. So you can specify, I have worked with pandas in my actual job and I look for people who know pandas as well because you know we use it. So actually specifying these packages or libraries is really helpful. So this is how I would put these things on a resume. Now this is another resume. This is our sample two. I'm gonna maybe include this one down below, although I don't like this format as much, but if you like it, you can. But here's another way that you can um, show these skills, just a different way to do it. I wanna show you both ways. Um, we have like Python and the libraries underneath it. I've even seen it to where people will write out almost like, um, let me go down here. They'll write out like a narrative. Um, they'll do Python and then they'll have like a colon and then they'll say use to um, manipulate data and I'm not spelling that right in pandas dot 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 and they write it out. You can do that as well. Again, I'd like bullet points because it's to the point. It's exactly what you need. Let's get rid of this one real quick. So this is the one uh, that I like. So that's the skill section. Let's move down to the projects. Now the project section is almost primarily for people who are just starting out. Once you get experience, typically you maybe have one project on there or no projects at all. But the project section is used as kind of um, in lieu of actual experience, right? I've always said that you need to build projects, not just for your resume, but also for the interviews. So then when you get into an interview, you can point to these projects and say, yes, I've used SQL. I did it in this project and they may have seen it. And you can walk them through how you actually used it. It gives you more credibility than just saying you know how to use SQL. So within the project section, we're gonna have a project. This one says data science, job market, exploratory data analysis. So this is a personal project. And then within it, they did some really great stuff. Here's usually what I recommend, and this is in here, which is you specify what you did. You say, I used Python, and what did you do to analyze this and gain insights in the job market? Then you walk through some of the things that you actually did. Things like regex techniques, you used pandas, matplotlib, you built a word cloud. These are keywords that somebody will look for. And they even highlighted them, which I personally like and do as uh, myself. They highlighted these things so that the viewer or the um, hiring manager is actually seeing them, making sure that they're bold so that they are catching their eye. So I personally do this and I recommend this. That's all it needs to be. It just needs to be, I built a Tableau dashboard doing this. From this data set, I cleaned it in SQL. And you show those skills. Something that's important in both the skill section and the project section is using and highlighting your skills as much as possible, especially if you don't have any experience, if you've never had a job before. Once you have a job and you come down to like the work experience, then it kind of speaks for you. But if you don't, you want the projects and the skills to speak towards your skills and credibility. So we have this right here. Now, one thing that's not in here that I actually do recommend is a hyperlink, maybe right here, or actually this being a hyperlink to the project. Because they might read this and be like, I, we work with, you know, data science, job market data. I don't know. And then they'll click on this link and they can see your work. That is the one thing that I would change in this. Other than that, this is exactly how I would have it. Very, very, very similar to my own. Um, and a lot of this that I did, I actually took from other resumes and formatted it how I prefer and like it. Um, so again, some of this is personal preference and you can change it however you want. That's just how I like it. So that is the project section. Now we're gonna go down to the work experience section. Now this person does have a little bit of analyst uh, experience. So, you know, if you don't, that's okay. But you put your previous experience. Now here's what I recommend. If you've been a teacher for 15 years, you've been a nurse for 10 years, you've had 10 different jobs, don't put all your experience on here. Um, maybe put your last two jobs, going back maybe three years. I don't recommend you filling it up because it's not gonna be super relevant unless you're applying for a healthcare data analyst position and you have a nursing degree. Then it's relevant and that experience is super helpful because it's domain experience, right? Then you may go back five years. Just, you know, use your discretion. But what do you need to include? Of course, your title, where you worked, your location and the times, that's standard for almost any resume. But within here, uh, what you really wanna do is highlight, again, the skills, if you can. If you can't, uh, that'll change. But 
In here, he says implemented a new reporting using Excel Pivot and VBA, which reduced processing time by 50%. These types of um, quantitative information, I reduced time, I, I, I saved the company money, I, I did something quantitative. Putting that in here is always helpful, always highly recommended, although it can be tough to measure these things, right? Typically what I recommend, especially if you're first starting out, is to highlight skills. If you're a teacher, you've probably used Excel and you've probably used Excel for closer to data analytics than you'd think, just in a teacher way and not a data analytics way. But you can reword these things and make them sound good. If you are a, a nurse, like I was saying, you've used Excel, you've used a health information system, you've used uh, some type of database, talk to that, include that in here. Um, and it can be hard to write these out. And I'm gonna show you a way in just a little bit about how you can write these out and think about these things or have a way to help you write them or give you ideas. We'll get to that in a second. Lastly, we have the education piece. This is again, really simple. At the very bottom, education, what your degree was, where you went, um, and if you have you know, some helpful things to include, you can do that. And then when you actually went. Now you can include other things in here as well, like boot camps. if you went to a boot camp. Or you could also include things like a GPA, although I don't personally recommend it. GPA has never been anything that I've ever cared about or I've seen anyone care about ever. Um, so you don't normally have to include it. One other thing that you can include at the very bottom is something like certifications. Uh, I personally don't put a lot of stock in certifications unless it is one that I have recommended in previous video, like the Tableau certification or Tableau desktop certification. If you're applying to a job that uses Tableau, that actually could be really good. So definitely include that. But one's on Udemy, one's on Coursera, or like my Alex the Analyst Bootcamp that I have on my channel. I wouldn't really include that in your resume. It's mostly for learning. If you get something like the Tableau one or the AWS uh, Cloud one or the um, Azure Cloud one, those are all actual certifications that can help you and give you credibility towards a certain skill. Now really quickly, let's just take a glance at the other resume. This is resume two. So we have the education at the top. Doesn't have to be at the top unless it's relevant, which you could put at the top. We have a skill section. They again, this is the project, same projects. And then work experience. So this is just a little bit different um, order. So you can do it like this as well in a different way you can write the skills and you can also include a summary section as well. So that's the meat and potatoes of how I would create a data analyst resume. Now. Writing it is actually a different beast, right? You have to actually write it out, get something on the resume, and then apply using that resume. But it can be hard to come up with these ideas. So uh, I just wanna show you something that a lot of people have been using. I personally haven't written a resume in a little while, so I don't use it for my own resume or haven't used it, but I will. Um, and that's using ChatGPT or some variation, whether it's on Bing or you know you get some different version or some new product that's out there at the moment. I'm just gonna show you how to do it in ChatGPT, some of the things that you can prompt it to do, and that'll be it. I'm just gonna show you kind of some ideas that it can generate for you to help you write these things. All right, so here on my screen, we're on ChatGPT. If you haven't used it, I'll leave a link in the description. I also have a whole video on how to use ChatGPT for a data analysis, um, so I like ChatGPT. Now, I've already written out these questions so I don't wanna wait for the responses, but here's what I asked it to do. And you can do some variation of this, whether you're a nurse or a lawyer or a teacher or whatever. I said, I'm a math high school teacher trying to become a data analyst. How can I use my experience on my resume to help me get a job? This is just to help provoke some ideas. And it says, you know, you most likely have some skills, Emphasize your quantitative skills. So those are some of the things you can focus on. Showcase your ability to commute complex concepts, which is really important in data analytics, being able to present information, which teachers have. Highlight your experience with technology. Hopefully you're using some type of uh, you know, database for students or you know, Excel or something like that, and you can highlight that. And showcase your ability to solve problems. Now, the next thing that I asked it was, I built a COVID Tableau dashboard using Tableau. How can I add this to my resume? And then it's gonna tell you exactly how you can do that. It's gonna say, include the link to your dashboard, which I also recommend, provide a brief description, highlight your data visualization skills, include screenshots or images, which that's what I would be putting in the project itself, not on your resume, and then provide context for the data. All really good stuff, really great. Now, the last thing is kind of what I'm trying to get at as a whole, it can help you write things. So I'm gonna say write a two cent, uh, I said write a two cent, write two sentences highlighting my COVID Tableau dashboard to add to my resume. 
And it's gonna say, developed a COVID tablet dashboard to visualize pandemic trends using real-time data sources, demonstrating strong data visualization and analysis skills. So this can help you generate those descriptions in your work experience. It can help you generate the descriptions in your projects. And this can be really helpful to just generate some ideas because I personally really struggle with like highlighting my skills and descriptions within those things. This can be a way to kind of help you do that. So don't, you know, just copy and paste, but let it prompt you, let it give you ideas. Now, the last thing that I want to mention is just your overall resume as a whole. The template that I use, the template that I recommend is very, very friendly to these automated systems that check your resume. If you did not know, most companies, especially big companies, use these automated systems that scan your resume, see if it has what they're looking for, and then that resume, if it gets through that system, gets passed on to a recruiter or hiring manager. Typically, most companies don't go straight to the hiring manager. So you need a resume that can pass through those initial systems and pass those tests. The resumes that I've shown you today will do that. They have bullet points, they have the keywords, they have everything you need. That's why I recommend, or partially why I recommend this type of resume. Other ones that have images and different fonts and different stylings can cause issues with these automated systems where it just doesn't read it properly or you know it doesn't read the right words that you want it to read. So just know that these types of resumes have different uses, right? You're not just handing it off to somebody to where they can read it and it needs to be visually stimulating. Really what you need is you need it to get through those initial systems, which these resumes, uh, if you write them well, you have good you know, skills and the right things on your resume, they will pass through that first layer to get to those hiring managers. So again, be sure to download those. Those are completely free. I just, I highly recommend using them. I think they're really good. So be sure to download those, use those, just put in your own information. Be sure to build out your own projects. Don't just keep the ones that are on there because you'll need to be able to speak to them. Sometimes recruiters or hiring managers are gonna ask you about them, how you built it, what you did. And you can also point to those projects in your actual interview. So I hope that this was helpful. I hope that your resume is ready to go. I hope that you're ready to start applying for those data analyst jobs. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. If you like this video, be sure to like and subscribe below and I'll see you in the next video.